to God, woman of God on the platform. I really thank God. You know, when I'm coming to, to teach, I'm coming home. So I'm oh. excited for what God has for us tonight. Amen. Tonight we are dealing with evangelism. It's yet another wide subject. So what I'll tackle tonight is not that it is, a, it is all what there is in evangelism. No, evangelism is quite a wide subject. We'll just tackle what is necessary because this is school of ministry. And so it is more to do with, you know, impartation, things that we need to do as ministers, as pastors and uh, ministers, because ministers is the best. All of us are ministers. And so I greet each and every one of you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is oh let's Amen. just let's just pray father in the name of jesus we bless you and honor you thank you lord for that which you desire to do tonight thank you lord for your will which is ever perfect thank you lord for this lesson we commit in your hands and i pray that lord will be able to learn and make use of what we'll be learning tonight, that our ministries, our organization, our churches will move to another level to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So as usual, uh, just to encourage me to know that uh, the people I'm talking to have not gone to bed. You know, with the Zoom, you can be listening while you're in your bedroom, you are in your, in your duvet, and uh, you won't even know that. Uh, we are you, here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you come to say, Amen, the lesson is over. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, evangelism. What is evangelism? The spreading that will have a, a number, uh, a number of uh, descriptions, and uh, does anyone wants to to try to describe evangelism? Anybody? <laughs> ah, is it the phone that wants to do so? <laughs> okay. Uh... I'm here, I can try. Yeah, 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 try. This is school of ministry. So, you know, there is no answer which is wrong. We, we it will always lead to some truth. Okay. Uh, evangelism, it is the spreading of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Anyone else who wanna try? Okay, so that's very right, woman of God. Evangelism is the spreading of Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. That's one of the descriptions. So there's no one which is uh, more true than the other. There are several, several of them. And they, the other one is zealous, advocacy or support of a particular cause, in this case, Christianity. So in evangelism, it means you have this zeal. You, you know that the, the Muslims also do evangelism? Yeah. Yeah, they do evangelism as well. But except what they do evangelism for is not a gospel, but it's zealous advocacy or support of a particular cause. So their cause is, you know, Islam. They want to spread it and they are doing it, you know, you know, furiously. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you know that film called, you know, Fast and Furious? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the speed they have. 
Um, at some point, I think I was um, I was working in a certain company, and uh, you know where you, where we are picking, you know, in in a in a storehouse. So we are doing picking of items. I think for sage berries, and uh, there were these guys, the Muslims. So when they saw that what I was carrying was too heavy, then they would come, maybe three of them. They would just come, big man, no, we'll carry this for you. We'll do this for you. We'll do that. I was saying, wow. Then they'll say, at the end, when we finish the shift, do you have transport home? And I said, uh, I'm not sure, but I can use a bus. They said, no, we'll take you home. That's the kind of evangelism they do. We went on break and then they said, big man, can we get you some tea? They made sure they pampered me. They look after me. They did everything just to make sure, you know, that I'm comfortable, I'm safe. That's the kind of, you know, you know, fast and furiousness that they have. Mm. Now, then, you know, there was a, another young man. They were actually trying to get him into Islam. And they, then they said, yeah. So the guy was saying, I want to buy a car. They said, you want to buy a car? No, we can help you. We can lend you money and you'll be paid. You know, you know, small, small, you know. And the guy, I think the guy must, must have been coming from um, Congo, you know, somewhere there or one of the countries in Africa. And they swept the young man. They made sure they gave him the money to buy a car and a good car. And they said, you'll be giving us little by little. You are our brother, we want to look after you. Even when they discovered I was a Christian, even when they discovered I was a pastor, they still where make, they still made sure that they looked after me, except they knew as a pastor. So when we're talking, I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor, I look after the congregation, you know, but they did not stop their goodness. That's how these guys catch people. So if you are mm. a, a lady or you're a man who has needs, they will cover all your needs. They will mm. make sure they make you comfortable. They say, you are our sister, you are our brother, we'll look after you. So that is evangelism. Mm. You know, they have this serious advocacy or support of a particular cause. You know, so you, if a, a Muslim guy gets close to you and wants to do this, this, they will just go ahead and take care of all your needs. And if you don't, you know, distance yourself before you know it, you are swept. Yeah. So that's evangelism. Taking care. They make sure they reach out to people with who have needs. They offer solution. But mm. with Christianity, you find that there's, we don't have that kind because we say each one for himself, God for us all as long as I'm saved, as long as I can speak in tongues, I, as long as my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that is the reason why Christianity slows down in its movement, while the Islam is already into nations. And they just make sure that, you know, all the people's needs are taken care of. And you know that that's the reason why people used to follow Jesus, because when they, had, when they were hungry, what would Jesus do? He would feed them. They were sick, he would heal them. So Jesus was Jesus, meeting the needs. I'm very well, how are you? I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. Jesus was meeting the needs of the people. Are you following me, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if yes. we are going to, if we are going to be effective in evangelism, we have to, to, to equally, as believers, find ways of meeting the needs of the people. Because sometimes, 
you want to preach the gospel to a hungry person. You want to preach the gospel to a naked person. Remember, Matthew 25, I was in prison and you never came to visit me. I was sick, you never came you know, to care for me. So they, Jesus was saying, if you cannot handle people's needs, forget about the gospel. They won't receive it. I'll give a story of the, the first congregation I, uh, I planted in, in, in Zambia. Uh, my wife and I planted. You know, it was in a, in a mines, mines area. And people used to come from a remote area to come for church. And after church, they would come to pastor's house. And they, this one would say, I don't have mealy meal, you know, uh, to cook sadza. I don't have this, I don't have this. So we started giving them, we started meeting their needs. And they went to tell their friends, they said, this side, after church service, you know, they make sure we have this, we have this, we have this. So people started coming until the senior pastor said, you know what? I thank God for what you're doing. But these guys, there will come a time when you stop giving them this, they'll go away because, you know, they, as much as it's good to help people, but if they don't get hold of that which is ministering to them, they would not have been helped. So we need to reach out. We need to meet people's needs, but at the same time with the discernment. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The other description of the of evangelism is preaching of the gospel to people who don't believe in Jesus Christ as their savior. So that's another description of evangelism. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, a faithful Christian, don't worry, if you are writing, you can write, but if not, I will actually, uh, maybe by tomorrow or depend on uh, how, I will send the notes to mama and uh, uh, she will definitely distribute to every one of you. So you will have the notes. Hallelujah. Amen. Faithful Christian, a faithful Christian follower does not concentrate on caring for his soul only, but thinks of other people's souls too. So if you are that person, everything is me, myself, and I, then you cannot impact other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to be conscious wherever you are at home, you have to be conscious. That's why in families, we must be conscious of, of saving one another. I'm with my wife, so I have to take care of her to say, mommy, have you, you want this, you want this, are you okay with this? Uh, you know, I have, it's, it's a practice that is making us, you know, outreachers. If everything's, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, everything's me, 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 myself and I, you know, then you cannot reach out to others. Jesus reached out to others. He lived his life for others. Even if it's just the two of you, you and your husband, the two of you, you know, you need to have this responsibility of, you know, esteeming the other one better than yourself, reaching out to your husband, reaching out to your wife. You have this kind of responsibility. You know, whenever you reach out to another with love, with demonstration of love, it makes you a better minister in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. A, this Christian is there to minister to those who already share his beliefs and to those who are outside. So even if you are both Christians, find a way of you know, encouraging your brother, encouraging your sister. You might not be at the same level in terms of um, knowing the word, so you always want to, you know, to reach out. You always want to encourage. Even, you know, you know, the Ibidapo family, you know, you, you know, they was they will encourage me. You know, Apostle, this is what God is saying. This is how, you know, you know, be strong. This is what God. So as a family, there must always be a way you encourage one. You, you, your input goes into the other person. That's Christianity. 
Hallelujah. So we are talking evangelism. So evangelism has a place at home. It has a place at church. It has a place at work. Types of evangelism. Um, I will just tell you some few, but I'll give you, you know, a homework to, uh, tonight. If I forget, remind me. I want you to go and write a presentation on this subject evangelism, especially uh, where you are. You know, I want you to write uh, a presentation. You know, tell me, you know, about evangelism where you are. Do a research. Find out what you know. Is it evangelism in the UK? Is it evangelism in Africa? Wherever you are, you know, and the challenges, evangelism methods. I'll tell you some, but I want you to discover some more as well, because that way it is interesting when you carry out the research, and then when you have done your your presentation, you send you send it to the, the director's email, and it will reach me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Types of evangelism. Number one is called pulpit evangelism. Pulpit evangelism. Now, pulpit evangelism is when priests and pastors, including all ministers, use pulpit evangelism in our churches and cathedrals. This is the most used kind of evangelism because we usually, you know, preach Jesus is coming. So repent, repent, you know, that is in the churches uh, where we go in the cathedrals for the Anglicans and the, the Catholics, you know, they'll preach from the pulpit. They will talk about salvation. They will talk about deliverance and everything else. So it's from the pulpit. But the only disadvantage with this kind of evangelism is that a uh, it is less effective. You know why? Because very few non-believers find their way to church. Even you can invite them, come with me to church, they will come. But maybe it may be one, two, or, or one family. So, you know, pulpit evangelism, usually it just, you know, works for already those who go to church. There is also what we call aggressive planned evangelism. Aggressive planned evangelism. Now this one, uh, it is that one when you plan personally, either as a group or maybe you are four sisters or you are two sisters, two brothers, you go into the streets. You begin to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Hello, uh, can I talk to you about Jesus? And then someone, you know, he will say, I have no time, I have no time. Sorry, that was, that was a call. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have no time. And these others will we'll give you two minutes. So that's a two minutes, talk to me. So within two minutes, you have to do, you have, you have to, all the scriptures you have, you know, I, I, I want to tell you that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You have, you know, you have to have all your scriptures ready. Oh, I've fallen short and, you know, and they, uh, you know, you see, that kind, the one-on-one, -on -one, others will give you enough time, you meet a Jehovah Witness, uh, they will actually make sure, you know, just, excuse me, just a moment. Thank you. 
sorry. I think that was a, I was sorting out an invitation somewhere. It was just an agent invitation, so just told them I'm busy. All right, so where was I? Aggressive evangelism. Ah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, aggressive evangelism. This is different from pulpit evangelism. Here you make plans to either go door to door or street evangelism. It is also called one on one. So one on one, you plan for it. You can go to your neighbor. You can you can go door to door if you pick one street. That is called aggressive because it is you going out. You actually make up your mind. Today I'm going through this street and it's door to door and you know you keep knocking or you keep you know you know talking to people and that's aggressive aggressive not because you are going to fight because it is you 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 just want to go out you've made up your mind you are planned you are prayed through and you just want to you know to, to evangelize so that's another uh the another one, the other one is called passive. These are just some of the, the, the ways, the types of evangelism. It's not conclusive. There is what we call passive evangelism. Now, in passive evangelism, you don't even know you are evangelizing. In passive evangelism, it is you living your life as a Christian at work. You don't tell people. You are at work, so you don't tell people, you know, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. But uh, at, ev your evangelism at work is that when someone says, ah, can I have, you know, one ream, one ream of papers, I, I want to take it home. And then you say, no, 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 that's not right. This is for work. This is for work. Or they want, maybe they're living their lives, they're stealing, but as for you, you don't join them. They are swearing, you don't join them. They are doing anything else which is not right, you don't join them because with you, you want to be faithful. You are a Christian, so you, you are at work and the company des demands that you must work for eight hours and you put in eight hours faithfully. While with them, they can say, I'll be coming. They'll go for two hours in the streets or they say I'm, I'm, I'm going to do ABCD and they take time, they even go home, drive home, comes back and maybe we just put in six hours, the two hours stolen, you know, but as for you, you are Mr. Faithful or Miss Faithful. You go to work when work, your shift starts at 8 a.m. and it ends at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. or 9 to 5 you put in everything faithfully. You are like what Paul says, you know, I'm a letter. You read my life. So when they look at your language, your language is good. Your language is impacting. Your language is holy. Your language is born again. While their language is, so sometimes at work, uh, when I would go for work, they would actually say, you know, when someone, you know, you know produce a swear word, then they would say, so, sorry, William, oh, how could I do that in the presence of Vicar? Forgive me, <laughs> you know? You know, they would just like, they would, they would apologize. They would apologize for swearing, apologize for smoking, apologize for all, because they, no, 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 no. William doesn't do any of these things. He is a Christian, he is a man of God, you know? And the next thing is, William, how can I be like you? You know, so that is what we call uh, passive evangelism. You don't tell people what to do. You are at work, so you mind your business. You are faithful concerning your business. Everything you're doing, or, you know, if some, your wife calls, hello, honey, how are you? Are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you when I, 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 I knock off when I finish my shift? And then they'll be like, oh. You know, what a wonderful husband. They, you, they follow your character. They follow your mannerisms, everything about you. And one day someone just said, can I talk to you? So if I'm to be like you, what can I do? 
and then you lead them to the Lord. So it's called passive because you are not aggressive. You are not reaching out to them. You are living your life at work. You are living your life in the neighborhood. So they know how you treat your husband. They know how you treat your wife. They, 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 they can observe that this man loves his wife. This woman loves her husband and she's, you know, they live a Christian. And so they will, be, they will be monitoring you. Sunday, you know, you find that you get your Bibles and off you go, you know, you get in your car, go to church, come back and, you know, you greet, hello neighbors, how are you? And they just monitoring your wife and your life and they say like, wow this life is good and then one day he said is it okay if you can follow you to church oh yes you know that is evangelism living a christian life a, a life full of testimony is is passive evangelism but it is reaching out hallelujah any question before i get down further there's also yeah. I just wanted to add the verse to what, to what you were saying. Where yeah. It says 2 Corinthians 3, verse 3, where it says you are a letter that yeah. is written. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. You are finish the scripture, woman of God. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, to remember. Uh, this is a letter oh. written with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Amen. Mm -hmm. hallelujah hallelujah thank you thank you so you, you know the apostle was saying we are letters as christians we are letters our lives are letters they mm -hmm. the, the gospel is written over us mm -hmm. but if you you know a non-christian you know swears and a christian swears then you know that passive evangelism has failed okay mm -hmm. It has failed because you know people are reading wrong. The title is that you're a pastor. The title is that you're a bishop. The title is that you're a Christian. But the works have actually jeopardized your title or your Christianity. And people be like, no, it's just by name. It's just by title. But these are people that are not serious. They can even say, yeah, we know serious Christians. That's why last time I was saying, you know, at Antioch, the, the Christians, you know, it was a nickname. It was a nickname because they were called the people of the way. Mm. Why they were called Christians is because they knew who Christ was, how he lived, how he talked, how he walked, you know, the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he lived, the way he, he you know, all his, his mannerisms, everything about Christ was holy. And so when a group of people started believing like Jesus Christ, then they said, these are Christians. In other words, they are Christ-like. They are after, you know, they live like, you know, they are, they are master. So that is very important. So sometimes Jesus did not tell people, you know, do A, B, C, D. He just lived his life. And, you know, some people started emulating him. That was passive evangelism. Hallelujah. The other one is the mass evangelization or crusades. That's another one, like uh, Billy Graham, the, the, um, the, the crusades that was, uh, he was conducting, the late uh, Papa evangelist, uh, uh, Reinhard Bonke. You know, that man, he was just, you know, you know, powerful. These were powerful men and other and other great men of God who have done massive evangelism in the world, in Africa and in, in Europe and America and everywhere else. You know, they've gone massive, you know, they've done mass evangelism. And they, you know, that one goes, takes a lot of organization. You have to have intercessors go before, maybe they have to pray over the place for one month, just praying over the place before the crusade, you know, you know happens. And they, even us, actually we're supposed to have intercessors, people that will be praying, you know, for evangelism to say, Lord, you know, help us to win souls. Hallelujah. So mm -hmm. there are evangelism methods and the strategies. So we talked, there's the outdoor preaching, 
outdoor preaching, it means you come out from the, the church, you, you go out and preach to a people. There is the door-to-door -door, you know, evangelism, we talked about it. There is also what is called lifestyle preaching. That's the one I'm talking about, passive evangelism. It's a strategy. And there's artistic, number four. I said, number one, outdoor preaching. Number two, door-to-door -door preaching. Number three, lifestyle preaching, which is uh, passive evangelism. Number four, artistic preaching. Here, that's where you sing Christian songs. There are certain people that have sung songs with such kind of anointing that after people have listened to it, they've ended up giving their lives to the Lord. Hallelujah. So in artistic uh, preaching or evangelism, you have you know, Christian songs, there's the theater, people play, you know, drama, and that drama will be, they have prayed over it and have acted and people just, you know, as it is being acted, the, you know, the people just begin to, to, to sob and to cry and give their lives to the Lord. There are movies, uh, movies like, uh, which, which famous movies do you know? That the Passion Christian, Christ. The Passion of Christ. Passion of Christ, that one, you mm -hmm. know, it was especially the one that uh, this, uh, if, if, what is this, his name again, you know, American, mm -hmm. he, he, he really played that one with a certain level because it was so real, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and the, the people that watched it, each time I watched tears would mm -hmm. actually just roll, mm -hmm. you know. So there are such, there is another world with evangelism. The you know, theater, there are movies, and they, they have all these are as effective method to preach the word of God. That people are born again today, and their pastors, just after watching the passion of the Christ, mm. they got saved, and they are serving the Lord today. You know, number five, booklet, you know, preaching. This is distributing tracts you know, flyers, you put them in hotels. You know, those days, I don't know here, but I think they were the Gideon. They used to distribute, uh, you know, Bibles. Sometimes there would be New Testament, sometimes there would be full Bibles. He placed them in hotels. And, the, you, know, you know, people would book the hotel, just see the Bible, say, let me read this book. They will read and they will not put it down because you would have prayed, you would have fasted, you would have, you know, sought the Lord. And the moment this guest, you know, you know, just reads the Bible, conviction before long, he's born again. And will give a testimony. I got born again when I checked in a hotel. So there are many ways of actually, the heart is, do you want to reach out? If the answer is yes, there are many ways of reaching out. You can always pray and they trust God for which formula. You know, God will lead you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. he, he leads us. And they, so there's this one for distribution, trucks, flyers, etc. There's another one which is quite common today. And they, this one, actually, we're even using it right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're using it right. It's called internet or media preaching. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is another way. So, you know, sometimes when people, you know, want to be my friends and, you know, you know I, I ask, I, I confirm we are friends. Then they get to message. I say, hello, hi, hello, hi. I'll say, hello, are you a Christian? Are you born again? And if they don't want that language, that is the way they will come out. But at, at least I've, I've preached. So you can use Messenger, you can use WhatsApp. You, you know, there's certain people who don't have anything to do. They would, midnight, they would just say, hello, hi, in Messenger. And then you just take time. Or if you have a good message, put it on Messenger and send it to her or to him. You know, others will say, I want you to be friends. And uh, are you single? Yeah, so at the time you say single, I'm, I'm married and then send some few scriptures, you know, and before you know it, some of them say thank you, and some of them say they will just disappear. So there are many ways of reaching out, you know, to people, 
you know, the heart, the question is, is our heart connected to evangelism? If we are connected to evangelism, then there are so many ways how we can actually reach out. There's another one is called relationship preaching. This one sometimes, because, you know, let's just admit that uh, even if we are Christians, we still have people in the world who like us and who want to be with us. So we develop a relationship with them. They might not be Christians there and then, but through the relationship, of course, we are mindful of uh, the Bible that says a bad company corrupts good morals. But there are certain people who, who don't want to pull you to their side. They like you for your principles. They like you for your lifestyle. They like you and they just want to be around you. And such people, you, you have a relationship with them. And you know, sometimes you just, oh, there's this testimony. I don't know if you have heard this testimony. And then you make them listen to it. And after that, you just say, wow, God is real. You know, and before you know it, they are, they are born again. And the, the other one uh, is, is someone, does someone want to ask a question? Okay. The other one is in church. Even if we go to the, we go to the same church, there are people that just want to hang around you. And they, maybe you have something that you were reading last night and it blessed your heart. Then you say, oh, my brother, last night, as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me like A, B, C, D. And you reach out to a brother within the house of the Lord, you know, especially the weak brothers. You know, you find that, you know, because of your relationship with this brother, because of your relationship with this sister, they end up becoming stronger than before because of relationship. So we call this relationship preaching. You reach out to the brother's inside, the sister's inside the, the house of God. And you also reach out to the people outside with the salvation, with the, in, the, the, the those that are inside, you reach out, you know, with the word to make them grow. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So this lesson is not about man's methods to evangelism or three steps or four steps to effective uh, evangelism, but spiritual principles. So tonight I'm coming uh, with a subject, this subject of evangelism in a way that God knows us better. Before you go out, before you go out, you must know who you are. You must have the boldness. The Bible says the righteous as bold as the lion. Sometimes people will like, you know, how do I reach out? You know, how do I reach out? Someone is at a bus stop. How do I reach out to such a one? You know, God will always give you, will, will lead you as long as you say, Lord, I don't know how to do this. The Lord will lead you. I've actually, you know, even preached to taxi drivers. I get into, into, into a taxi, I say, ah, my friend, I'm going to such a place with so my wife will be, will be telling, we go such a place. And right there, you say, oh, do you know where you're going? Say, he says, yes, okay. You know, do you want a postcode? Say, no, I, I know the place. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, are you Christians? Oh, yes, 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 we are. Are you? I said, no, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm a Muslim. I said, oh, no, if, if, if you're a Muslim, you know, you know, you know, the Bible said Jesus is the, the way, the truth, and the life. So, you know, you still need Jesus. We'll talk and someone will say, yeah. I talked to someone who said, you know what? I'm a Muslim, but I have never heard the explanation you have given, how, how you've given concerning, you know, Ishmael and Isaac. You know, I, I, that part, I've never heard of it. So I, I, I explained. I said, you know, you, you know, these are both the, the sons of Abraham, but the promise was to Isaac. Mm. Then I'll explain. Same, Abraham, but the promise was to Isaac. And mm. God said, you know, you know, this one, Ishmael, yes, he's your, he's your seed, I'll bless him as well. But my promise, the line that I have to, towards Jesus Christ for the, the fulfillment of, you know, the 
the three Genesis three fifteen. It was a line, and and from from Noah. Oh, let me not go there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Noah had three three sons. Okay, mm -hmm. you know that's Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Shem. So I say now Shem from Shem. That's where Abraham came from. That was the line from Abraham. You know, from Shem, it comes to Abraham, Genesis 12. Then from there, it comes to Isaac. It comes to Jacob. Then it comes down in Jacob at how many sons? So I started explaining, explaining until he said, wow, I've never heard it that way. So there is always a way that God would, would cause us to reach out, to reach out to somebody. Hallelujah. So this mm -hmm. lesson, we want to, you know, to... Uh, to come to a point where we can look at spiritual principles. God himself will make available resources that will bring about fruitful harvest. Can someone read for me Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38? Matthew chapter 9. Um, Verse 35 to 38. <clears throat> I think if someone has found it, they can read. Okay. Okay, I can read. All right, thank you. Uh, Verse 35. Yes. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, yes. teaching their synagogues. Mm -hmm. Preaching the good news of the kingdom mm -hmm. and healing every disease and sickness. Mm -hmm. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them yeah. because they were harassed and hopeless, like mm -hmm. sheep without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but mm -hmm. the workers are few. Mm -hmm. the Lord of the harvest. Therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. So when you look at 35, he's saying, then Jesus went about all cities and villages. So you see his strategy was to reach out to cities as well mm -hmm. as to villages. Yeah. Teaching in there. There's a word there, there, synagogues, there, synagogues. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus knew what, what he came for. His mission was to bring salvation. His mission was to bring real life, the life of the kingdom. So he knew that the Jews, you know, on, on Sabbath would be found in their synagogues. Mm -hmm. So for him to go and preach, he had to follow them right where they were. Hallelujah. Preaching Amen. the gospel of the kingdom. The mm. gospel of the kingdom. Now, kingdom means the domain, dom, domain of the king. There is no domain without the king. So every domain must have a king. So this is the kingdom. It's the domain of the king. So Jesus is that king. And he came to tell them about his father. He came to reach out to them, John 3, 16. So this kingdom is a package. In the kingdom of God, there is salvation. In the kingdom of God, there is healing. In the kingdom of God, there is deliverance. In the kingdom of God, there is prosperity. And that's why the Bible says he took away our sins. Hallelujah. You know, Matthew 8, 17. Mm -hmm. He took away our sins. He took away our, our the sicknesses and our poverty. He took mm -hmm. away our poverty and he gave us life. Amen. The, the, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus has come that we might have life and have it 
more abundantly. So there is abundant life in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So he took away, you know, so when he, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, this gospel is good news. It's good news. How good are the feet of him that brings good news on the mountain? So good news. So Christians, you and I, we carry good news. That's why I don't, I, I feel bad and I feel, you know, annoyed when I hear that the person who should be bringing good news to a young lady is the one who is destroying the young lady. Mm. You are supposed to be telling the young lady the good news. You are supposed to be giving the young lady, you know, the news that actually brings prosperity. Prosperity, the news that bring, brings closer to God. And then someone tells me, you know, Bishop so 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 raped me. Bishop so 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 slept with me. Bishop so so so, you know, Pastor so so evangelist. So I, I mean, all this is nonsense. Jesus brought the good news. Mm -hmm. The good news is healing. The good news is salvation. The good news is prosperity. The good news is moving from, from grace to grace, from favor to favor. So when we, we, we evangelize, we are saying we have received good news from the Lord and we want to pass it over to you. So that if you were, you, you were depressed, you should come out of depression. If you mm -hmm. were sick, come out of sickness. If you, your, your life was trodden, come out of that and enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God. Amen. So when we're talking about evangelism, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about us taking good news, taking the light to the place where there's darkness. Mm. Mm. So Jesus, when you look at verse 6, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. That's the key word there, compassion. You cannot, why we Christians are failing to evangelize today is because we lack compassion. Jesus did what he did because he was filled with compassion for the people. He was compassionate for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So he was shepherding them. Mm -hmm. And verse 7 says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. That's the language of harvest and laborers. Now, uh, therefore, pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, we should be praying to the Lord of harvest. Mm -hmm. What will the Lord of Harvest do? He will send laborers. Now, this is a farming language. It means you have the farm. You have sown seed. And during harvest, what do you want to do? You want to harvest, to bring the harvest into the storehouse. And they, you know, in this, you know, ah, God help us. One of the clearest clearest illustrations used by our Lord to explain the condition of the lost and the duty of the saved is found in this analogy of ripe harvest. So lost souls are called, uh, looked at as ripe harvest mm -hmm. and the need for harvest workers. So there's ripe harvest and there's also workers. Amen? Harvest mm -hmm workers. So these are laborers who have to go in the field. So let me say it this way. Since many of us do not live on the farms, this illustration may not really impact us. In the days of Jesus, many people lived off the land and grew their own crops. So when Jesus talked about the, this illustration, it's because he was talking about the language that people of that day would understand. 
So they understood clearly what Jesus was talking about. What would happen in the field if there are no laborers and yet the harvest is plenty? What will happen to the harvest? It will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It will rot. Mm -hmm. So dear believer, man of God, woman of God, before God, you are that laborer. You are that harvest worker. God is counting on you. He is counting on me that the harvest, the world, people are ready for salvation, but people to go and harvest them, to bring them into the kingdom, these are the ones that are not there. So one of the prayer points in our churches is to ask the Lord of harvest to send genuine harvest workers, because others are thieves. They will go and get the harvest for themselves. That's why now the board of Christ has so many scandals. People go to church and they expect to go and be taught good news, salvation, but they find themselves being abused by the harvest workers. Hey, God help us. The same people that God expects to harvest his souls are the same people that destroy them. Hallelujah. So we need to pray for, yes, my sister, or you, my brother, we, we need to pray for genuine preachers, genuine evangelists, genuine prophets, genuine pastors, genuine apostles to go in the field and harvest the lost souls for the Lord. Consider the field as the precious souls of men and women who will perish if they are not brought to the saving grace of Christ. Okay? Christ is the Lord of the field and knows that each soul is in danger of being ruined. Souls are ripe, but must be harvested now. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is calling upon those who are the field hands the members of his family, his church, to go and harvest the crop. So he who does not win souls to the Lord is not wise. But he who wins the souls of the Lord is wise. What does it mean? Hallelujah. What does it mean, winning souls to the Lord? It means that most of us think so winning as a New Testament concept, but a related idea exists in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, you know, 1130, probably 1130, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Mm -hmm. And he who wins souls is wise. There are many methods of evangelism, but God is saying we should win souls through you know, passive evangelism, through aggressive evangelism, through mass evangelism, through dot to whichever formula that God reveals to you, we should win souls and bring them to the Lord. Our character, eh? character and personality, the way we relate with people, the way we relate with non-believers, the way we relate with fellow believers. There are some people who have left church because they were abused. So is that winning a soul? So we must pray that God will give us a formula of how we can win souls. As men as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8, 14. We need more imaginative approaches rather than people doing things by tried and approved methods. You know, because A, B, C, D, pastor, so use that formula. It doesn't mean that's your formula. So we must be attentive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. If it's going to be door to door, let the whole, you know, sometimes people, you know, this church was in town. They were singing choruses. They were singing songs and they were evangelizing. And then this other church will say, we we'll also go and do the same. No, it's not about doing the same. Let God lead you. What is God saying about you? What, which formula has God given you? Methods that have made impact in the past are not likely to produce an impact now. It could have been that time. So we have to pray for the now word. What is God saying now? 
So when the Lord speaks to you, speaks to me, we have to act on the word of the Lord. Mm. We are in a season whereby people in the body of Christ have different approaches towards evangelism. So wait upon the Lord for yours. Hallelujah. We need to cry to God to reveal to us that formula so that we can be effective in our evangelism. In all nations, in every language, the day is almost here when every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of our Father, Philippians 2.11. Paul commanded his son, his spiritual son, Timothy, to do the work of an evangelist in, in 2 Timothy 4.5. What was Apostle Paul trying to say? Yes, you're a pastor, but evangelize. Yes, you're a prophet, but evangelize. Yes, you're an apostle, but evangelize. Yes, you're a teacher, but evangelize. Yes, you are just a church member, but evangelize. Because the commission is saying, go ye. In that go ye, there's no, you know, to say there's, there are pastors. Hallelujah. We, we, will, we will soon look at this kind of evangelism. Let's go to the, to the book of uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Mm. Acts chapter 10. It's one of the examples in evangelism. Acts chapter 10. I'll read verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. So this was, this was a sin, okay? Cornelius was not saved. Cornelius was born again, but he was religious. So he feared God. He gave alms, he cared for the poor, he cared for, and you know, he was a boss. He cared for the poor. He cared for, you know, for the people around him. And because of what he was doing, the fear of God, the three says about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon Etana, whose house is by the sea. So this is the spirit of God, you know, you know, uh, you know through that vision, you know, an angel is speaking to Cornelius. And he says, he will tell you what to do. The angel himself doesn't tell Cornelius what he must do. He says, call for Peter. Hallelujah. Mm. Call for Peter. So this man, he could have, you know, the angel could have started preaching to Cornelius, but it is not in the angel's place to preach salvation. It is our job, you and I. So Peter goes, you know, to Cornelius and says, you know, before he goes there, you know, he was praying and in the process, he fell in a trance and God brought a sheet of all these reptiles and says, Peter, rise, and, rise up and eat. Mm -hmm. And Peter says, no, 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 I cannot eat. You know, I cannot eat what is unclean. I can't eat what is common. God said, do not call what, you know, what I've cleansed as uncommon or, you know, or, you know, unfit or whatever. So he spoke three times and Peter, you know, by the time Peter was agreeing with the, the Lord, the angel of the Lord, 
the people were by his door. They spent a night, the following day, they went. I, I, I won't finish the whole because um, I have a lot to cover before we hit eight. So they get there because the angel said, and Peter will tell you what to do. I'm an angel. I've just brought good news from heaven. I've just brought this message from heaven. So send your workers. Send your workers. Okay? Send your workers to go and call Peter. So Peter should come and preach. So angels are not to preach salvation. You and I have been commissioned by God. Hallelujah. So this high and holy privilege was and is left for men, people like you, to preach, not angel. All that the angel was allowed to say was, now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose name is Peter, Acts chapter 10, verse 5. The mighty seraphim from deep heaven had to bow to Peter's higher privilege. So Peter was the one given the privilege of preaching the gospel. So brethren, this privilege of preaching the gospel is quite a high you know, commission. It, the God of heaven has allowed you and I to preach his word to the dying world. What a commission, what a responsibility. You might not preach like Billy Graham, the late. You might not preach like, you know, uh, Renhard Bonke, the late. You might not preach like these others. Do your part. Everyone has been given grace. Everyone has been given an assignment according to the given grace. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Do your part. So it pleased God to send people like you and I to preach the gospel. God used four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to write down the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. These were ordinary men, ordinary men, that God used to write the gospel which we are reading and preaching through today. So you are that important. Apostle, am I important in this gospel, in this program? of the Lord. You are very important, my brother, my sister. We have to bring many sons to glory according to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, Revelation 7, 9 to 10, Matthew 28, 19. Hallelujah. We need to preach the gospel. Let me just, you know, read quickly Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter 28. Verse 19, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So God has given us the mandate, has given us the privilege of working with him as partners. He is in heaven. We are on earth. He cannot walk to that door because he's spirit. So he is living in us. So he is using us to go there on his behalf. Our legs are his. Hallelujah. We are his legs. We are his hands. We are his mouthpiece. We are his body. So God cannot come, you know, in the spirit and preach to someone. He will send us there. Go and preach. Go. Go and call uh, Simon, you know, you know, by the surname of, of Peter. You know, go and call him. Bring him over to Joppa to come, uh, to, to bring to Cornelius, to come and preach, come and preach, come and preach. So you are that person that God is using to evangelize. 
God is counting on you and I. And how do we do that? We need to abide in Jesus Christ if we are going to be fruitful. Again, uh, let me go to the book of John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'm reading myself because I want to hurry because time is not, we must finish this because next Monday we have pastoral theology. Mm. So it says, this one says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he do? He takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. That's fine. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Brethren, there is nothing that we can do without Jesus. We have to abide. So if we are going out to evangelize, we need to be soaked in the word of God. We need to be soaked in prayer. We need to be soaked in the scriptures. Know where the scriptures for repentance are. Know the scriptures for salvation are. Know the scripture, every scripture. You know what you are, you are taking out. You know, have, you, you have mastered it. You have, it is in here such that even if you're not opening the Bible, you can still quote the scripture. And when you quote the scripture, you know, heaven backs you. The Holy Spirit backs you. The Son backs you. God backs you. So because you are a servant, he has anointed you. He has sanctified you. He has separated you for himself. You are a consecrated person set apart. That's what Jeremiah said. You know, God told Jeremiah, you know, he said, before you were knitted in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. For what? To do my mission, you know, to pull down, to root out, to, to, you know, to destroy the works of the enemy and to build and plant my kingdom, my work. So we, we were known before we were born that, uh, you know, we're already set apart for his work. So now that we are here, we need to work. You know, Acts chapter one, verse eight says, the, you know, the great commission to us believers of all generations found in Acts, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, power. Power for what? To eat Saza, to eat <laughs> burgers, to enjoy, you know, fish and chips. What, what, what is the power for? What is the power for? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me, Acts 1.8. You shall be witnesses to me, where? In Jerusalem, and where? In all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You can imagine the commission is for the whole earth, brethren. Brethren, Matthew 3, 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, this fire is not just for telling people, you, you, know, you, you know, back to sender, back to sender, fire, 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 die, die, die die all the witches that are coming to trouble you at night, then use the fire. No, this fire is to be in you so that you can preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, and, in, you, know, you know, save, you know, preach salvation and people getting saved. So that's why Jesus told, you know, those who are in, in the book of Acts, do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the comforter. Wait for the dunamis, wait for the power 
so that when you go out, you, you have power to raise the dead, power to pray for the sick and the sick shall recover. Because there are altars out there, which is the power, which is a power. So if you're going to evangelize, you evangelize and you meet a witch and you know that this guy, you know, I know of a, a witch, you know, back home in Zambia, you know, you know, when, whenever I was, I was going somewhere with mom and he was coming, mom would tell me, go and hide. We would see from afar and say, just hide. And mom would just stand somewhere and show as if she was to rest. The, the witch will come and you say, ah, how are you? And they'll mention my mother's name. And after that, we'll pass. And after I've passed, yeah, he has passed. Then I will, mom will call me, come, let's go. And what would happen is that this witch would just swallow saliva. Once he swallows saliva, <laughs> go, you are gone. That kind of power. <laughs> but now, the way I am now, if it was that time, I would have just walked straight to, to the old man and uh, just greet him. If he swallows alive, he dies himself because I was, I'm carrying power. Hallelujah. There is a package within me. There is a package within you. There is power within you. There is anointing and the anointing breaks the yoke of the enemy. So we have no reason to fear to reach out. We have no reason to fear you know, to talk to people about evangelism. We are carrying power. You know, sometimes we lack confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, when Jesus said, he who is in you is greater than the one in the world, he meant it. He wasn't joking. The one who is inside you is greater than that witch that kills people out there. Can someone say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a sound from heaven. What did this sound do? As of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He's holy. You know, the Holy Spirit, some of his name, that he is our advocate, he is our barrister, he speaks mm -hmm. on our behalf. Amen. That's why I say, when you go to court, don't worry what you are going to say. Mm -hmm. I can give an example. I went to one of the courts in this country when the judge was saying, why don't you go home? Why don't you go to Zambia? I looked into his eyes and I told him, I will never go to Zambia until God tells me so. And, and my wife was there and the barrister, when he looked at me, it just, the word just came. I told sir, I will only leave United Kingdom when God has told me your mission in the UK is over. And the judge wrote in his notes, he, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> that was years ago, I'm still here. They tried to say, what are you waiting for? You know, go to your country. I said, the one who brought me here will send me back, not you. I'm still here. So it takes boldness. And someone say, ah, oh, you, you told that? Yeah, it just came. Go you know, do you remember that it is Jesus who told King Herod, you know, tell that folks mm. that I'm here preaching the gospel here tomorrow and the other day. Tell him, mm. go and tell him. This gospel, it is real. Yes. God help me. God help me. Mm. This gospel, brethren, this gospel is real. Mm -hmm. When Amen. Jesus says, he who is in you is greater than the one in the world, it is real. Jesus is, in, is greater than the queen. Jesus in you is greater than Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. Jesus in you is greater than anyone you can think. He is greater than Putin. He is it in Russia. He is mm -hmm. greater than anybody you can think about. You are carrying the government of heaven inside your heart. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Amen. Don't fear. 
evangelize, speak the gospel, speak the word. And of course you speak as the Holy Spirit leads you, not just speaking anyhow, because we differ in levels of authority. We differ in levels of authority. Mm -hmm. God has told me, you know, I'll, I'll send you to corridors of power. And I've met politicians. I have met some of these, you know, the mayors. I've met some of these, you know, and I've, I've just released that which God tells me. So there is no way a person can intimidate me when God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are in me. I walk, I am representing heaven. I'm a package. I am an institution as I am carrying the presence of God. Amen. Carrying the power of God. I may be short, but in the spiritual realm, I'm tall. Amen. So let's preach the gospel. On the day of Pentecost, what came from heaven was not a joke. It was serious business. I'm supposed to teach, not to preach. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it, it, it just went. So the Holy Spirit, he did not make us photocopies. We are not photocopies. We are original. So when we go out there, let's go out there with boldness. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Let me tell you. The lion is not the strongest animal in the, in, in, in the bush. I have seen a buffalo hooking an animal and killing it, a, a lion and killing it. I have seen that giraffe, that tall animal, do a, 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 a back kick in the mouth of a lion and destroy it. I like watching this animal, you know, uh, animal movies or animal, you know, I like just watching. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the buffalo would just hook the lion and kill it. What is it that makes the lion feared in the bush? It's boldness. Mm -hmm. Boldness. It is this animal which is bored. It doesn't fear any, anyone, even though other animals are stronger than it. You, have you seen that the lion when it knows it is meeting a, a group or maybe of buffaloes, it can't mm -hmm. even go near. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are certain, you know, certain buffaloes that are huge, mm -hmm. they are gigantic, big, enormous, whatever way you can describe it. When the lion is going towards it and it is, it is also advancing, it's coming. Uh, Sorry, sorry, For the whole earth, brethren, brethren, amen. Am I in? Yes. Oh, sorry for that. I think I, I pressed it somewhere. So boldness, as we are dealing with the subject of evangelism, that's why today, tonight, it's not so much of this formula, that formula. No, it is all about boldness getting results. We need to get results. Amen? Mm -hmm. Am I in? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> <coughs> so boldness. As we are dealing with the subject of evangelism, that's what you yeah, echo. Oh, there, there is an echo. Yeah. I think it's on recording. The recording is on. I think it's, it's playing the recorded one. Yeah. So God is, is not a duplicator. You are original. 
evangelize with your original talent, original gift. You, you know, don't, you know, compare yourself with others. Comparison, you know, diminishes. I think somebody is playing on YouTube. If anyone is on YouTube, can they stop it? Can they stop YouTube? Or someone is playing YouTube. I think we can hear 